quick introduction. I thought I would show you guys a couple really short clips and like photos from my trip to Seattle, which was in July, like late July. I was so far behind. I, I just have really bad ADD and I don't, um, I don't take any medication for it. So I tried some medications for it and whatever. They just, I didn't like them. I didn't like how I felt on them. So I just deal with the disorder, but I feel like it's something that people throw around too easily. Like, oh, I have ADD. I can't concentrate, but it's like a real diagnosis that I have and it's been with me my whole life. Uh, it's genetic in my family. Some of us have it and some don't. Of course, I get it. But, uh, you know, it's always caused me to struggle in school. I had to study in nursing school in a closet with a flashlight so that my dad taught me that. So that my eyes would only be reading the words that I was trying to study and there was no other distraction. Nothing to look at. Nothing to hear. It sounds crazy, but it is the only way I got through nursing school, but everyday things like my to-do list or cleaning my room, like it doesn't get done and unless I have forced myself or really break it into small steps. Anyway, long story short, things that I've wanted to do, like upload some of these clips onto my channel, it's been on my to-do list forever and I just haven't done it, so I'm gonna do it. But this is a quick intro. I went in July this year just for a couple days to stay with a friend and he was so cool. He took me around everywhere I wanted to go, everything I wanted to see, because Seattle to me is like the holy land, right? To religious people, like I think Israel is the holy land, but to me, um, Seattle is where all my favorite singers and groups and just the grunge and everything's there. I wanted to see where Lane Staley lived, the house he lived in until he died, or the condo. Um, I wanted to see Cobain's. I just wanted to see all this different stuff in the Seattle area. We got to do it all. And I don't have a lot to show you because I lost a lot of footage, but um, I'll put a couple clips in here. The first one, you're just gonna basically see me like focusing the camera on gravel because I'm walking. I was like in awe. I was so excited. This was the, the most important thing to me on the trip was to see Lane Staley's condo. So the part where you see the gravel, that's us. We looked on a map and we drove until we found it and that's us walking up the side of his building and then coming in front of it. You can kind of hear us talking and I'm trying to figure out where it is. Um, and then the next clip is going to be right down the road, not even half a block from his condo is a little hole in the wall, like dive bar called, I don't want to get it wrong. You'll see, you'll see the sign in the clip, I think. Blue Moon, I forget, but that's where historically Lane would walk from his condo sometimes and just I mean, it's sad, but it's written in the internet. He would sit there in the back booth and just sort of nod out. He wouldn't order anything. And the waitresses knew him so well, they knew just to leave him alone. And I think this is just my guess, but I think he just went there to be around people. Maybe he got lonely in his condo. I'm not sure, but it was cool to me to be able to see that walk to it. And when we got there, it was closed, so we didn't get to go inside, but um, it would have been so changed anyway. When I looked in the window, there were no booths anymore that I could see. So there probably wouldn't have been much benefit to going inside. It was more about taking the walk and seeing the, the landmarks and stuff like that. Um, of course, we went in the Space Needle and we, he, my friend that lives there, he just recently moved there, but he loves Seattle so much too. And so he's very knowledgeable because his job takes him all over in the undergrounds and the inner workings of Seattle. So he sees a lot. And he showed me the factory where, factory, or I think it was a factory, where Gary Ridgway, the, the serial killer, the Green River killer, um, where he drove to work that day that he had a dead body in his truck and he worked all day at the factory with the body in his truck. We drove past that. I didn't get to go to Green River. I'm still a little scared. Isn't that funny? Because I'm obsessed with like the history of serial killers and stuff like that in a non-creepy way. <laughs> like I have all these books on them. Anyways, we didn't get to go there, but we mostly just hung out at the landmarks I wanted to see and at my friend's house. And he has the coolest house where in the backyard, if I have any pictures left, I'll include them. Um, in his backyard is like a stream that connects to a lake and like a, a fire pit and stuff with chairs and it's just so cool the lake's always or the, the stream is always flowing it's not like a sedate body of water 
I mean, you can sit there in his backyard on the chair with your feet in the stream and see the mountains in the background. It's just, I will live there one day. Just haven't gotten there yet for a lot of reasons that make it very hard for me to move there right now. So um, it's not a financial thing because I'm a travel nurse, so I could easily take a travel assignment there, which I probably will do. But when it comes to moving there, I have family here and I have medical problems that I want to be close to my doctors, so I would have to do research and all this stuff. But anyways, that was a long, meant to be short intro to what I'm about to show you. Also, you'll see a picture of me and Tummy Vexed. Quick intro is that um, the night I got to Seattle, we went to sleep, and then the next day we decided to walk around where the market is, where you see like the, the fish market and all that. And we got hungry and we were trying to decide where to eat. We couldn't decide. Walked around a lot of restaurants and then we'd be distracted by my ADHD, of course. And we'd see stuff and we'd want to go see that, walk through that. Finally, hours went by and we're like, we got to eat. So we picked this restaurant that was like outdoor, indoor, outdoor sitting like on a pier. And um, they took us to a table outside, but it was in the sun. So we asked to be moved somewhere else. And as we sat down and ordered our drinks, I noticed the person there's like a path and tables on each side. The person across the path at the next table looked really familiar. And I told my friend really quietly, I think that's Tommy Vexed. And my friend didn't know who that was, but I explained and he was like, you should ask for his autograph. I've never asked for autographs in my life, but I thought about it. We ate, I kept like kind of looking over, but trying not to be obvious. I'm like, okay. I'm gonna wait for him to finish eating because I would never approach someone in the middle of their meal. It looked like he was on a date with someone because there was a real pretty girl sitting across from him. I didn't want to interrupt. I didn't want to be weird, but this was like a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I waited, he finished eating and then he ordered another plate. I think I counted three plates that he ate. He's a big dude. So once I was sure he was done eating, we got up and gathered our stuff. And then I walked over and real timid, I'm so scared. I'm like, hi, Tommy. I'm a big fan and I just was wondering if I could get your autograph. I had just bought a little wooden postcard with a picture of Seattle on it and I had a pen with me so I flipped it over and asked him to sign it. And uh, he did and he was like, he stood up, hugged me, shook my friend's hand. He was like, do you want to take a picture? I was like, oh my God, he's offering to take a picture with me. That's so cool. Because I would never ever have had the balls to ask. And he starts talking to us about, you know, he doesn't live in Seattle, he's from California and he had just come because they had a show there that night. He's like, are you guys coming to the show? Which we didn't get to, we had other plans, but. Um, he was like, have you guys been to the Rock and Roll Museum yet? That's really fun. Have you been here yet? That's really, he just talked to us. Like we were part of his, we were his homies, you know? Like I already know his story and respect him so much, but that made me respect him so much more. Like he was just so cool and so down to earth. And um, I couldn't get over it all that weekend. I was like, can you believe this? My friend asked me to send him the picture and stuff because he was showing his friends. And it was just such a cool experience. And I think that had that been someone like Axl Rose or someone that's been famous for so long and it's gotten to their head, uh, he would have had an entourage and he would have had a bodyguard and I would never have even been able to approach someone like that. So I can appreciate um, rock stars that are new enough to fame to where they still appreciate their fans and don't go out with an entourage. You know, nobody else in the restaurant approached him. I don't know if anyone recognized him or what, but it felt so special. So I'll show you guys that and anything else I could find on my phone. But that was an awesome trip and I cannot wait to go back. I already have a list of other places and things I want to see there. So enjoy.
Ghost comes here. Holy shit, you guys. There's a preschool though. Oh, it's not that building? Is this the right side? Oh, the building starts on the second floor. Two, three, four, five. Very, very top floor. Oh, it's five. two stories. The top floor is two stories. Got it. Oh my god, you guys, that's it. I want you to see this. See? See the little short parts right there? The very, very tall, tall part? That was his condo. Oh my god, I'm shaking. Look at me kicking. Look at my hand. That's it. That's embarrassing. I'm actually here. <laughs> here is a panoramic view. I don't know if he had a car. No. Nice. That says Susan is better, duh. Looks like a note to Chris Cornell. Good show you present. Yeah. Here, I that's already a, have it on video. Oh. You want to just use mine or you got yours? Yeah, we'll just take a bunch. Okay, let me turn this off. I'd walk there if I lived here. Kind of makes a point of bitch and know who the works or anyone knows that either. They said the waitress is used yeah. to know them. They don't, that's 15, 16 years ago. They're not there. 